the Dallas Stars boast one of, if not the deepest group of forwards in the NHL. And on today's episode, we take a deep dive into two of their newest players in Craig Smith and Sam Steele. Talk about what their roles could look like on the team and which prospects may be left out to dry uh, and might have to fight a little bit harder to earn a roster spot. All of this coming up on today's episode of Locked On Stars. Your Locked On Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey, coming to you on this Friday, July 7th. And whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener, thank you for stopping by and making Locked On Stars your first listen of the day. Be sure to subscribe to the show on YouTube. Follow along on your favorite podcasting platform of choice. We are always free and available no matter where or how you may choose to listen. And we're here today to continue our discussion of the newest Dallas Stars players. The Dallas Stars, I mean, let's just face it and let's call it like it is. They have the deepest group of forwards in the NHL. You you could have maybe even made that argument before free agency, but I think after the moves that they've made here in free agency, I think it's pretty hard to argue that anybody else has a deeper group up, you know, down the middle uh, and with the wing position as well than the Dallas Stars. They added Matt Duchesne, Craig Smith, and Sam Steele to a core that already boasted Jason Robertson, Rope Hintz, Joe Pavelski, Tyler Sagan, Jamie Benn, 24 goal scorer Wyatt Johnston, who scored those 24 goals as a 19 year old rookie. I mean, this is a loaded group of forwards. You can even throw in Evgeny Dodonov, Ty Delandria, Radic Foxa, Mason Marchment. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And I spoke plenty yesterday about Matt Duchesne and what his addition to the team, to the organization, uh, you know, what, what he adds. And I encourage you, if you haven't already, to go give that episode a watch or a listen. Uh, really great time discussing what Matt Duchesne brings to the table. But you know, the depth of this team goes beyond him. Jim Neal went out and added three forwards, all on very team-friendly deals. Matt Duchesne, one of those coming in at one year, $3 million. But then there's also Craig Smith, who is a sneaky, great signing for this organization. He's been around the NHL for quite some time and will certainly be a very welcomed veteran presence on the team at 33 years old. He'll be turning 34 in the early days of September. So before the season gets going, he has 853 regular season games played. So it's likely that he'll be crossing the 900 game threshold at some point during this season. On top of all of that, he has 69 games played in the Stanley Cup playoffs and even was a member of the Predators team that went all the way to the Cup Final in 2017, where they eventually did lose to the Pittsburgh Penguins. But this is a guy who certainly has his fair share of experience in the postseason, as well as the regular season, where he's getting closer and closer to that 1,000 game milestone, and he'll likely get there, uh, you know, hopefully by the end of his career. Only take him, uh, you know, maybe two or three more seasons to reach that goal. And he even hit the 200 goal marker at the end of last season once he became a member of the Washington Capitals. He was, of course, a part of that Dmitry Orlov trade that sent him from Boston to Washington in exchange for Dmitry Orlov. But now uh, he finds himself as one of the newest members of the Dallas Stars, and he should mesh incredibly well with the guys in the locker room, namely Joe Pavelski and Ryan Suter. And the reason I say that is all three of those players are alumni of the University of Wisconsin's hockey program. I know that, you know, there's always it's great to see the connection between players that either played for the same junior club, same the played for the same college, or maybe competed against or with one another overseas, whether that be in Europe or Russia, maybe even perhaps. Uh, really great to see that connection there. And I imagine there's probably already some connection made, although they didn't necessarily overlap in the time that they played at the University of Wisconsin. I know that that's a 
you know, prestigious program in terms of the players that have come out of that university and have come out of that program, including Suter and Pavelski, who are some of the more distinguished alumni who have gone on to have very long and pretty successful NHL careers. And so I imagine that that's a pretty easy way in to connect with the locker room. You start with those guys and then that branches to, you know, being another one of those great veteran leaders working alongside Jamie Benn, Tyler Sagan, uh, and Matt Duchesne. Again, I expect to step into that role quite nicely as well. And Craig Smith is an interesting player because he isn't what you would call an electric scorer, but he's very reliable, uh, a very reliable option to have in your arsenal of players. Uh, for being in his early to mid 30s, he still skates incredibly well. He's an incredibly knowledgeable player who plays you know, pretty good attention to detail on both sides of the ice. I mean, he can certainly use his offensive prowess to score some goals, to set up his teammates. His 200th goal, uh, actually uh, just a, a weird situation where the New Jersey Devils made an irresponsible pass in their own end, and, and Craig Smith just in the right spot to intercept that pass. He was there knowing that that pass might not come, but in case the Devils made an ill-advised move, he would be there to reap the benefits, and he was. He, he's great on the forecheck. He can be effective in the offensive zone as well. He can go into the faceoff dot. Certainly not the strongest numbers in the faceoff circle, but uh, it is nice to know that he can get put in there if needed and can hold his own to some extent, but he won't be a guy that the Stars rely on heavily in order to win more draws. But just a very consistent and reliable player uh, that any team would be glad to have in their arsenal, but especially the Dallas Stars for, again, one year, one million dollars an incredibly reliable option to add to the list of forwards and he knows what it takes uh, to have success in this league he knows what it takes to get to the stanley cup finals he of course has not won just yet but like many players on this star's roster he's hungry to go out and win that first stanley cup and and similar to many of the players on the star's roster he knows how it feels to get oh so close to make it to the stanley cup final to be on the brink of hockey immortality just to fall short. And that's something that he can relate to with plenty of players who were on that run in the bubble in 2020. And even most of the players that are sticking around from this year, I know that the stars didn't make it to the cup final, but you know, going back to the end of the season and the end of the cup final, uh, I think it's still pretty clear that the stars are really, truly the runner ups uh, as they probably would have, you know, done the same thing as Vegas if they were put in that situation. And it feels like the Western Conference final was a better representation of the Stanley Cup final than the actual Stanley Cup final was. But I digress there. Uh, Craig Smith knows what it takes to win, and he knows all too well the feeling of defeat and, and, you know, not getting the goal, not getting the outcome that you so desire, as do many of these Stars players. A, a lot of it fresh on their memories as well. And it's, it's going to be a hungry and fired up group a determined group who's looking to get back to the postseason and make another deep run and to go even deeper this time. And I think Craig Smith, if he's allowed the opportunity, uh, will be a fantastic fit in that locker room and on the ice. He's not going to be the guy that's you know scoring all the goals or getting the most attention. Uh, but I think if all goes according to plan and he gets consistent minutes, uh, we're going to look back uh, on you know his time here in Dallas, at least this season, which is what we're guaranteed. And I think we're going to be pretty grateful to have a player like him who might go under the radar at times, but is going to be a key contributor uh, and probably do a lot of things off the ice that don't get seen by the fan base that probably go a long way just in terms of encouraging teammates, being a good teammate, and being a consistent presence in the locker room, on the ice, whether that be in practice or in game situations. But it's not just Craig Smith who is new to the Dallas Stars organization. The Stars also picked up a little bit more youth for their forward group and signing Sam Steele. And we'll talk about what Steele brings to the Stars organization coming up next. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's 200 you can spend on betting everything from the money line to the over-under to who you think is going to hit the first home run. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you can get paid instantly. So there's no better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. 
So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. FanDuel is an official sports betting partner of the MLB. I want to thank you again for making Lockdown Stars your first listen every single day for all of our everydayers out there continuing to make our podcast a part of your daily routine. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to the show on YouTube. Uh, we are getting oh so close to the 2,000 subscriber, subscriber mark. I, I believe we're under 200 subscribers needed in order to reach that milestone. So if you're new to the YouTube channel, uh, and want to support the, the channel, the best way to do that is to hit the subscribe button and leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know how you feel about how the Dallas Stars have done so far through free agency. Obviously, there's still some work to be done on the defensive end of the ice, but the forward group, you got to feel pretty good about, especially given the value that the Stars are picking up these players with. And, and it's not just Matt Duchesne. It's not just Craig Smith, although we are excited for both of those players. There's a third forward that the team had picked up who, could very well see some NHL minutes this season. And I'm, of course, talking about Sam Steele, who comes to the Dallas Stars through free agency, having last played for the Minnesota Wild. And Sam Steele is a little bit of a different player than, than uh, a guy like Craig Smith. Um, and, you know, not quite the same as Matt Duchesne either. He kind of falls in the middle. He was a first-round pick. He was the 30th overall pick in the 2016 NHL draft, drafted by the Anaheim Ducks, actually played a little bit of time with Yanni Hockenpah, uh, during his time with the Ducks organization. That was something that Sam Steele brought up during his uh, time with the media. Um, I guess his opening press conference. It wasn't necessarily a, a formal press conference. It was held over Zoom, but that was something he did mention, that he does have some connection with this Dallas Stars team, as he and Yanni Hockenpah were teammates at one point, both when their careers overlapped in Anaheim. But but Steele's a, a just fascinating player. 30th overall in 2016, still kind of finding his footing in the NHL after, you know, five years or so of NHL experience, he has over 200 games played only five playoff appearance appearances, though, or five playoff games, rather, as he never made it to the postseason with the Anaheim Ducks. But finally, with the Minnesota Wild this past year, made it with them, of course, only getting to play five games as his team only got to play in six games. But he did make somewhat of an impact on the series. Sam Steele had one goal against the Dallas Stars. It was actually a breakaway goal in game one at the AAC off of a Jason Robertson shot from the point. Uh, a very impressive play in sequence from Sam Steele to tie that game up. And that's the, the goal that a fish up eventually, I guess, if you want to get technical, forced overtime and allowed the Minnesota Wild to get out of that game with the win, taking a 1-0 series, uh, although didn't really matter too much in the long run, but still an impressive play from Sam Steele, uh, who had his best season last year with 28 points in 65 games played with the Minnesota Wild. And I think really that play that he against the Stars in round one, where he scored that breakaway goal, it kind of embodies what he does really well. He's a speedy skater who can bring plenty of energy whenever he's on the ice. He just needs to continue to find that scoring touch. I think worst case scenario, he's a speedy, scrappy kind of player who can forecheck hard, uh, and just you know, kind of fly up and down the ice and really just be wherever he needs to be. Uh, he just needs to continue to get a feel for his game and the game going on around him so that way he can continue to position himself in advantageous situations because as we've seen, the speed and the skating is certainly there. At 25 years old, he can move incredibly well. Craig Smith is a good skater, but Sam Steele, uh, is arguably the best skater that, that we're getting between the two. I think Matt Duchesne probably still adds a little bit more value in that department. He still moves pretty well despite being in his early 30s too, and that's really kind of what Duchesne was known for in the early stages of his career. But Sam Steele, for lack of a better term, could end up being a steal for the Dallas Stars uh, if he's able to turn out a season similar to what he had last year or maybe even show a little bit of improvement it's going to be great value as he's only going to be getting paid $850,000 for one season. Another example of a contract of a player that you want to bring in, not very high risk. This isn't, you know, you're not spending a ton of money, not adding a ton of term for a player who is kind of still looking to find his footing. And you, I have to imagine, looking to earn whatever contract comes next for him, whether that be in Dallas or whether that be elsewhere. He's going to be playing incredibly hard because he doesn't know when that next contract is going to come or where it's going to come from or what it's going to be worth. 
So $850,000 for Sam Steele for this upcoming season is incredibly good value, especially if you're going to get a 10 goal season out of him, 28 points. But if he can get somewhere into that 30 to 40 point range, I think that that's even better value uh, and even more of an incredible steal. And if it doesn't work out, you can either trade him at the deadline and maybe acquire a better defensive piece or just don't bring him back. Let him finish out the season. And if you don't necessarily like what you see, let him go test the market and hopefully he can go get a contract and a new start somewhere else. But he's coming into a situation uh, where he's, you know, not facing a ton of pressure because he's coming into an organization that already has their superstars set in place and are going to be in a good position for the next few years. But they are looking to contend and compete for a cup as early as this season. So you know that he would like to chip in and contribute in whatever ways he can. But he is going to have to battle for his spot on the roster as there are a few different prospects kind of waiting in the wings in the Stars organization who could be looking to potentially steal a spot from a guy who seems to be a great fit in the NHL. And I want to talk about a few of those prospects uh, and what we can expect from them and, and whether or not we should see them in the NHL over some of these veterans. And we'll talk about that coming up next. Third and final segment of today's episode of Locked on Stars, talking about some of the prospects in the Stars organization who seemed like they might be locks for the opening night roster, uh, just given the potential that they've shown in the AHL and junior hockey as well. I'm, of course, talking about Maverick Bork, Logan Stankoven, and even a guy who I feel like has flown under the radar uh, as of late, just in terms of where he stands in the organization. But during the season, the Dallas Stars went out and signed Chase Wheatcroft out of the WHL. He played three seasons in the WHL, kind of playing for a variety of different teams and had some okay numbers in his first two seasons, but really took a massive jump in year number three with the Prince George Cougars. 68 games played, 47 goals, 60 assists, 107 points. 107 points in 68 games played. Only one other player in the Western Hockey League had more points than Chase Wheatcroft, some kid named Connor Bedard. Uh, we don't really know much about him. Maybe he'll be good, maybe he won't. But Chase Wheatcroft had more points than Logan Stankoven, who had 97, uh, who came in fourth in the WHL in scoring. Chase Wheatcroft, Zach Benson, Logan Stankoven, two, three, and four in terms of WHL scoring. But he's a guy who I feel like we, we're overlooking and forgetting. Uh, Wheatcroft will likely, I, I think, start his year in the AHL with the Texas Stars. But, he, I mean, again, just took a massive, massive jump with the Prince George Cougars this past year. And so I think the organization, they obviously like what they saw. Otherwise, they wouldn't have gone out and signed him uh, whenever they did. But now he's a part of the organization and he's going to be in the AHL. And he could be an option for you know the Stars to call up at some point during the season to make his NHL debut. And I feel like really ever since the middle of the season, ever since we've finally kind of got the confirmation of, okay, Wyatt Johnston is a star in the making. We, we know that he's special. We know that he had a special season last year. He's going to continue to have special seasons. It was like, all right, Logan Stankoven is up next. Maverick Bork is up next. But it, it's not necessarily that easy. You look at Cap Friendly, you look at the Stars roster, and they have 12 forwards listed on Cap Friendly right now. If the season started today, the Stars technically would have a full team. They have their goaltending situation taken care of. Cap Friendly has them with eight different defensemen. Not the ideal defensive core there, but you could have a defensive unit uh, with six guys on the ice and a seventh guy waiting in the wings. But then you have your 12 forwards. Cap Friendly has the forwards listed. Sagan, Ben, Hintz, Robertson, Marchment, Pavelski, Foxa, Duchesne, Dodonoff, Smith, Johnston, Steele, Delandria. We're, of course, still waiting for Ty Delandria to sign his new deal. Not sure when that's going to happen, but I imagine it is going to be happening, hopefully, sometime soon. But that's 12 spots, and you only need 12 guys to play on a given night in the NHL. So that could leave some guys like Stan Coven, Wheatcroft, and Bork out to dry. And that's what, again, and I've talked about this before, that's going to make things incredibly interesting when training camp rolls around as you know, the guys like that, the prospects, and then even some of these younger NHL players, it seems like Sam Steele is ready to be a full-time NHLer. 
but he's going to have to work way harder in order to make sure he gets a roster spot because guys like Stan Coven and Bork are going to be doing everything in their power to make sure they get a roster spot because they, they want to, you know, Bork has been a member of the Texas Stars. He is really ready to make that jump to the NHL, I think, at least probably on a personal level. Whether or not he's there from a skills perspective, we'll have to see once training camp does roll around. But Logan Stankoven, uh, if other prospects like White Johnston are any indication, he's probably ready to make the jump. And we're going to have to wait and see once preseason games start up and once the training camp you know, drills and scrimmages go on. But I mean, those guys are going to be giving it everything they've got. And so it's going to squeeze and apply some pressure for some of these veterans or, you know, actual veterans, but even some guys like Steele who are 25 years old and have a healthy dose of NHL experience. It's going to make things very interesting, but also is a pretty good problem to have in case the stars run into some injury issues. You're going to have guys at the AHL level who can help contribute there to, to a team, hopefully looking to get back to the Calder Cup playoffs. But then if the stars find themselves... Uh, in injury trouble or if something else happens and they need people to get called up, you, you can rest easy knowing that you have NHL capable guys down in Cedar Park ready to go at a moment's notice, uh, whether that be the prospects or, you know, guys that are a little bit more NHL ready. It, it makes for an, an incredibly intriguing and fascinating situation, but it, it kind of brings me to a conclusion of my point that the stars have the deepest core of forwards in the NHL, but both at the NHL level, but then even where they can go and get prospects and where they can go and draw from the AHL. It's an incredibly talented, deep, and skilled group. And I say all that knowing that the Stars could make some moves and maybe they have some forwards who could get traded. I know I've talked about the idea of a Foxa or a Mason Marchment trade. That still could happen, but it also might not. And no one really knows what's going on in the mind of Jim Nill, except Jim Nill and maybe a few other front office executives. Uh, but I'm, for one, am excited to see what else maybe they have up their sleeves. But then training camp's going to be here before you know it. And we're going to get to watch these guys compete there as well as during these preseason games. But that is going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Stars. Thank you so much again for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. Be sure to subscribe to the show on YouTube. Follow along on your favorite podcasting platform of choice. We are always free and available no matter where or how you choose to listen. You can also find us on social media, Instagram and Twitter for now. Maybe we'll be hopping on threads sometime soon. Uh, we'll see if threads is actually here to stay or if it's just a, a fleeting thing in the moment. Uh, only time will tell. But I hope you guys have a great weekend. Take care of yourselves and we will see you back here on Monday.